What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at adding typography into a design system using variables in Figma. Even if this is your first time using variables, don't worry, this is going to be really, really simple. As usual, there is a link to a Figma file in the description if you want to follow along. Let's jump in. So in my file, I have 11 different text styles. If I cut it, kind of categorize them, I've got two title fonts. So I've got display and title that are really big. Then I've got subtitle, heading and he subheading, which are more of our headers. Then I've got all the body and body small and the caption. Right now, these are all the same font. They are open sans, which is just a, a very neutral font. And I'm going to play around with them a bit. What I have done, and you may have seen me do this in previous videos, I do like to adjust my line height. For the big ones, I like to use 120%. And then as I go down, you'll see that I like to give it a bit more space. So the smaller the text goes, the more sort of space it needs around it. Um, so you see that the body ones, I'm giving them 150%. And then the smallest one, I am giving 180%. Because if it's small text, you don't want it to be all clustered together. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to make them into variables, then I'm going to make them into styles. And I'll explain why we still need to do both of those as we go along. So in order to make our lives a bit easier, what I've done is I've already created this sort of table to help us out with what other variables we even need to create. So the different sizes, I've just gone through our fonts and checked what are the sizes that I have. And these are the sizes that I've been using. Then these are the different weights. Now with typography weights, you can either use numbers like 400, 500, 600, or you can use the names that we're used to, like normal, semi-bold, bold. The reason I've chosen to use numbers instead of names is because I'm going to use two different fonts for all of my text, probably. I'm going to probably have the titles in one font and the rest in a different font. And then the names of the different weights in each font family might not match. So one might call it semi-bold and one might call it medium, or one might only have four different fonts weights and one will have like 10. Yeah. So I think when you're using different fonts, use numbers. Now, if you don't know what the font weight number is, which I didn't, to be fair, the best trick to do this is you see right now it just says bold. But what you can do is go into dev mode. So shift and D. If you're using a free Figma, by the way, just go into the properties panel of this element. I think you still need to shift D to get there. And then make sure it's on CSS. And then you'll see here in the section where it's kind of telling the developers what to do, it will say font weight 700. Yeah, and that will be true for all of them. So this one's 400, so it's 700 again, 700, and then this one is 600. Yeah, so that's how I was able to get this list out. Now let's decide on the font families that we want to use. I've kind of gone ahead before and looked at a few that I kind of liked. I'm using the set of new Google fonts that Figma has updated because they're really fun and I like a font. Um, yeah, so I kind of like this one that's called Arima. It's got a nice curved thing to it. It's good for big, bold text. It looks like it's something you'd look at. It's a bit playful, but it's not too crazy that it's not legible. And then for the others, I think I'm going to go, this is again a new font that I've been looking at called Comforter. Um, and it's just nice and round. I think it goes well with the top one. So yeah, so let me write that down. It's really important that we know exactly how they are spelt. Arima. There we go. So let's start creating our variables. I'm going to move a bit to the side, clicking on the canvas, so clicking on nothing, go into local variables, and I'm going to rename the collection we are in to type primitives. Now, the reason we're doing this is because I'm going to want us to have two different collections, one that has the primitives, so all of the like basic things, and then another collection that has the actual details of every single style. This might seem like it's too much work. This sort of leveled approach really protects you in the long run. So let's start with our first variable. I'll just hide my collections, create a first variable. It's going to be a string variable and I will call it family title because I think this is for the big for the big stuff. Then my value is going to be a Rima. Then I can use shift and enter to create a new one of these. So it just duplicates the variable that you've already had. And this is going to be called family body. And it's going to be comforter. Yeah, I'm actually going to select both of these and put them into a new group. I'll call this one 
family. Now for my font sizes, I'm going to create a number variable. So I've moved into all variables, so I'm not creating it inside the family group. All variables, create variable number. I'll call it font size and then slash. That means I'm creating a group using the slash. We know this, we're familiar with slashes from everywhere else in Figma. Now, how I'm going to name it, this is completely a personal opinion. Um, it is good to create a sort of scale so you know where you are. We're gonna create eight different variables for the sizes. So it's good to know if you're on the first one or on the last one, but I really like to know what the value is as well when I see the name. So I might call this maybe one and then I'll put 12 in brackets. It's a bit of cheating, but yeah. So the value is 12 and then I'll just go ahead and shift and enter and add all the rest. So the next one is going to be called two and then in brackets, 14. Again, I know that the number in the brackets is a bit redundant, but it just helps me, so forgiveness. Um, now for the weights, let's create a few of our different weights. So I'll go into all variables, back again, create a new variable. It's going to be a number variable, and then I'll call it a font weight, so slash to put us in a new group. And then for this one, yeah, I'm gonna actually name them because I don't necessarily remember what the weights are. Uh, medium is going to be 500 and there we go now that we've created our primitives what we're going to do is now we move on to actually create a new collection and this collection is going to be our actual type tokens so I'll rename this into type core tokens so in this collection, we're going to create sort of a group of variables for each of our styles. So let's start with display. Now the first one is always going to be like a long name because it's going to create the groups. It's gonna be a string variable and let's say I'm gonna call it titles and then display slash. So we're gonna have a group called titles inside of it, a group called display. And then our first variable inside that is gonna be a uh, family. Now, we, what family are we using for display? We've already decided we wanna use the title family. So you see in my primitives, family title. Now we're gonna need our next variable, which is the size. So number variable, and I'll call it size. Then what size is this one using? It's 72. So we're going to use apply variable. We're aliasing here. And this is why we've created the primitives because we're aliasing it. We're gonna call on one of those variables rather than just put in a value, which means if later on in the process, I wanna change everyone that's 72 now to 73, I just go into the primitives and change it there rather than having to find all of them. That's the beauty of variables. So this one is font 72, right? And this is why I put the number in the brackets because if not, I need to remember which one it is out of this process. So it is 72, great. And then we shift and enter because I need another number variable. And this is going to be the weight. And this one is bold. So I just use bold. Now we need to create one of these for each of our styles so in order to make our lives a bit easier we can just right click and duplicate the group and i'll just name this one title and this one is using this font size and i don't need to change the rest so i want to put subtitle in there as well i think cool so we've done that for our titles so now i'm just going to go ahead and create these little groups for all of our styles Great, so now we've done the hard work, we have all of these, now let's start assigning them. So I'll go into my first one, which is display, and I'm going to assign it to the right variable. So let's start with a family. I'll go into my apply variable. Now, you'll notice that when I click on that, I've got so many different options. So let's help ourselves a little bit. What we're going to do is use scoping. If I go into local variables, I'll go into type primitives. I'll select all of my variables that are in the primitive collection, right click edit variables, and I'm going to just untick here. So I'm not going to show them anywhere. Meaning now when I select 
any element, if I click on apply variable, I won't see any of these primitive variables in there. The primitives only exist for us to be able to alias them in our other collections. So at least that takes out all of these from the running. Now, when I click on display, go into family and then click on my variables, I'll still see quite a lot, but they're all from my token collection. So I need display. Now in here, I'm going to apply variable. I'll just look for display and then I need the weight, fabulous. Same with the font size, go in here and the size for display. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that for all of my fonts. What I can actually do is scope this even more. So I'm gonna go into local variables and then go into my typography tokens and then all of the size ones, for example, I'm just holding down command while I select them. I could have done this before duplicating and then life would have been easier, but hindsight, right click, edit variable. And then I'm gonna make sure that I only see them when it comes to font size. Then do the same thing with the weight. So I need to really just like selecting all the weights, right click, edit, and then untick and make sure to only see them for font weight. So now where were we? We were on subtitle. When I click on this variable, I will only see the sizes. Let's keep going. So I've done all of those. They are all connected to their various variables, but it doesn't stop here. Now I'm going to create these into styles. Now, the reason that we're doing this double work is again, to just protect ourselves even more. Um, and also if every time you want to use the display font, you have to assign these three different variables, you're never gonna finish your project. So I'm just gonna create these into a style, click on plus, and then um, using the same names I used before. So titles, and then slash display. Great, and this goes by a lot faster. So what's really good about doing this is that you can also add in additional things. So for example, this body link, right? Body base, let's create that one. I know I'm jumping a bit, but I'll do them in a sec. So body, and this is just base. So the only difference between body link and body base, they are using the exact same variables. The only difference is that this one has a text decoration on it, which is underlined. You can't do that with variables. You can only do that with styles. So this is what will help us differentiate between them. So like body slash, put it in the body group and then link. Yeah, and then they are two different styles that essentially look the same apart from that decoration. I'm not gonna bore you with doing all of them. I'll do them in a sec, but then with caption, this is the one where I always like having one of these textiles in my typography system. I like having one that's a bit different and has a real kind of captiony vibe to it. So what I like to do is go into my extra setting, click on the uppercase. So anything I type in here will forever be uppercase and then give it a bit of space. So let's say four pixels, similar to how I said at the start that when you create small fonts, you need to give them a bit more line height. Same thing when they're small fonts, you should probably give them a bit more breathing space from, from each other. So I think 4% is usually a good one. And then I'll put this into a style. Uh, it will be inside body and then caption. And then anytime I use this, so if I click on T, type in and just write something. Hello, this is a caption. So you'll see it's just, it really is really different next to the, the base style or the small base even. It just is a nice contrast. So I like always having one of those in my system. So yeah, let me just go ahead and create the rest of the styles. So I've created all of them. I did them out of order, so I need to organize. I'll click on my canvas to see all my textiles. And then firstly, I'm gonna move headers up to here. Uh, make sure it's not inside of titles though. Let me just command Z that and untoggle these. There we go. Just so when I look at it in my, when I'm selecting a style, it will be in the correct order. Um, yep, and then 24, 20. Then over here, I do need to move. Ooh, I named these the same. So I accidentally named base and base and bold the same, but you can see here that it's showing me that this one's a bold one. So I'm just gonna rename it to bold. Then I'll move it up here. Then move caption down to the bottom. Perfect. 
And that's that. I've got a great set of a typography system. And again, these are a lot of steps in order to reach it, but it does really protect you in the long run because this is a good system that you can then duplicate for all of your projects. And then if your next project, they say, actually my big titles, I want them to use a different font. You can just go into your primitives and change it. So instead of Arima, let's say they want to use uh, Patrick Hands. You just change it, yeah? And then it automatically change it across all of the different styles as well, right? So if I go into this style over here, you'll see it uses title, title. It uses that one. So it's so deeply kind of aliased that I just need to change it in this one source of truth and it will just treacle down. And that was that. I hope you enjoyed. Just a quick way of showing how to actually use this in a system. I might make some more design system videos moving forward. I had a long series about it, but a lot has changed since, so it's good to keep updating it. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know how you're getting on. See you at the next one.